Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you, Jan, for sharing your film with us and for being here uh, for this Q&A. Uh, maybe wanted to just talk about uh, the, the film and what attracted you to the, to the story. It's uh, based on a true story. Uh, what made you interested in, in making this film? I have to say, I've never screened a film in a castle. This is something big for me. <laughs> um, well, um, in uh, 2016, after my, my first film, The Last Family premiered, and uh, I was looking for another story, a new story for my next project. Uh, one of the things that got into my hands was a book called uh, Leave No Traces, The Case of Grzegorz Przemek, uh, written by um, Cezary Wazadewicz, great journalist and uh, reportage writer, because it's a reportage book. Um, and it gets all the details about this story. And when I read it, I got this... Because I think that it's all about feelings and emotions, really. You can't uh, calculate your next project. You, you, you can't calculate how to make a film, to make it like a success or whatever you want it uh, to do. Um, I, I got scared when I was reading it because although the story took place in uh, 1983, a year before I was born, I, I had this feeling that it looks like it just happened around the corner, you know, and I got the book from my producers because they, they thought that this is a potential idea for a film. And I said, yes, of course we have to do this. And that was the beginning of, of this long journey that took four years and something. So it took four years to develop before you, uh, or rather, uh, a couple of years to develop before it uh, it actually. No, no, to finish the film. Oh, to finish. The we, film. we premiered in in Venice last year, mm -hmm. so I had like my next film came five years after the last family. Okay, um, we, we talked. We were talking a little bit uh, earlier uh, about the film, so I asked I asked him a lot of questions before the Q and A, um, but I'll repeat some of the questions. Um, this is a political thriller. Uh, it's based on on a true story. What, as as a as a director, as an author um, in the film, how do you decide what to keep uh, and and what not to keep? What what to embellish? What not to embellish? I mean, do you always strive to keep those uh, true elements in there if they can serve the story, or is the story you know primary? Is is the film is the film as an experience more important than actually getting uh, the raw facts right? Well, I think that, you know, no matter if it's based on real events, if it's based on a book, if it's your script or somebody else's script, the work of a director is always, uh, it's kind of interpretation an adaptation of this, um, what's in the screenplay. So this is, this is my perspective and, uh, the consequence, the, the main one is that, uh, I can judge what is important for the story and what is not important for the story. Sometimes you have some, you know, obstacles, some things that are not really my decisions, but I have to do it like this or like this. Um, there's a lot of, uh, artistic decisions, obviously. Um, and I have to say that with no traces, I had like a total freedom in the case of every creative decisions. And I'm really happy, especially, uh, you know, those days, uh, when it's really hard to make a film. Uh, the casting is is great. I mean, uniformly great performances all around. Uh, just the faces, uh, the, the prosecutor, great casting. Uh, you hate her as soon as you see her, and you hate her even more as the film goes goes on. Uh, you were mentioning that 
there wasn't really any any video of, of this lady. You couldn't really see how she behaved, um, but you did get a chance to speak to someone who knew her. So maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, we had some photos of her. Uh, there are some descriptions coming from the documents, from some interviews or some people who remembered her. And, uh, but it was like, you know, somebody else's opinion. And because she's, uh, she, she's a really, really interesting character. <laughs> and, uh, I, I had this feeling that she's, uh, almost like, you know, straight from a comic book or something. Uh, I, I actually called her, uh, one day, uh, you know, the Joker of the Polish communist regime. And I think that's, 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 that's a good name for her. Um, but I really care about, um, uh, you know, the real story, the, the, the roots, the, the genesis of every piece of this, um, of this film. So I didn't want to go too further, too far from, uh, from what, what looks like was, you know, in, 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 in real life. And when, uh, I think it was in Gdynia on Polish film festival, that was Polish premiere of the film. I met with one of the older, uh, Polish director who remembered those days and he met, he told me he met her. And that she was 100% like this. And that was the moment when I got even more scared because I, I was like, well, it can't be true. But, you know, on the other hand, um, I, I remember when we, my, my previous film, The Last Family, we, we were working on the promotion and uh, for the international trailer, I think someone's, you know, give us like a, tagline that it's stranger than fiction. And again, with you know, traces, we had a lot of that kind of things. And, um, and this is why I like true stories that are so unique and so, you know, multi-layered. This is a very complex story. It had to be a long, uh, it, it was always meant to be, uh, you know, a long film, not a short one, a multi-layered. Uh, not an easy one, not really a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. There, but there's definitely comical elements, uh, in, in the film, but the tone is, is quite serious and it really is a, a thriller in the best sense of the word. Um, yeah, but on, at the same time, you can treat this story, for example, as a coming of age story, because you, I, I really like the, the, the arc of the main character of you like that. He, um, he wants to be like Grzegorz. I mean, that smart, that, that conscious, uh, in terms of, you know, legal rights and then so on and so on. Yeah. But because what is happening on this, uh, square of, of the old town in Warsaw is, you know, Grzegorz is saying, you know, he's using his freedom that no, I don't have this idea. I don't want to show you this idea. Although after a couple of minutes, you see that he had it with him all the time. Yeah, he had it the whole time. Uh, so that was his conscious choice. And uh, if you think about Yurek as a character, he's just a kid. He's like the one that he, he, he would show it, you know, <laughs> in a second. He shows it in, in, in the police station, actually. And uh, what is happening with him during those two, more than two hours in the film, is that he's growing up to become an independent, uh, person to actually say that, well, I'm kind of, uh, not on the same side with my folks, right? That's a strong statement. Uh, but at the same time, it's a political story, of course. Um, I wanted to maybe open up the questions to anyone in the audience who might have a, a question for Jan. Yes. Uh, what, what kind of consequences, sorry? Well, 
not really, actually. That's that's the sad part of it. That um, the only thing that actually happened, well, the uh, Vysotsky and the other guy from the Ambulance, they got, uh, but it, but it was written in this in the end credits. Um, they got two and two and a half years, um, but they didn't do a thing, right? Um, if we're talking about the government, the only political consequence uh, that I can really name is uh, General Kishak, the Minister of Internal Affairs. Um, he, uh, in, in uh, 1989, 1990, he was about to become the prime minister. And it turned out that he can't be because of what's in the papers mainly because of this case. So that was, in a way, uh, the end of his political career. But, you know, <laughs> this this is just like a silly punishment for this, right? Uh, n no one was uh, sentenced because of this case, and no one will because it's all, it's too late for this. We can only make films about it and talk. Uh, the film is very uh, epic in in scale and in, in how it looks. Um, can you maybe explain how how you managed to bring the '80s back to to Warsaw and to make everything look like it was really shot in uh, in 1983? Well, I remember when uh, it was quite early in pre-production. Someone read the the screenplay and said, "Well, that's more that's mainly in the offices, right?" And I was like, well, not exactly. <laughs> and uh, the first big um, big thing to solve was that they, they arrested them on, on the old town, in the old town uh, square, which is quite a popular place in Warsaw. You have the castle there. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, so I, I, I told my producers that we need to close down all of the whole, old town to, to make it, uh, work. And that I knew that's going to be tough, but, uh, I don't know if there's someone who saw my previous film, the last family, but there was a plane crash in this film and it was shot in, you know, one continuous shot. And I was like, we, we did that so we can do this thing, right? And no one said no. It was like, well, we need to prepare and prepare and prepare. And it took a while. I, m me alone, I went to this square at least 27 or 28 times just to go and, you know, scout, look around. Um, and we're talking about one scene. Um, the other thing, which was quite a surprise for me because I didn't think about it when I was reading the book, is that... Uh, the the apartment of Barbara and Grzegorz, it was in a, you know in the center of the center of Warsaw, and and of course the building is unique. And it's like, well, so what we're gonna build this thing? No, of course not. So we had to recreate the entrance, and it was another in terms of production design, art department, and you know organizing films. It was um, it was quite rough, but I'm trying to be very very precise in uh, what I want to achieve. Uh, I I do a lot of storyboards. I work a lot with every department in uh, in development and in and in pre-production. Uh, so I think it's a huge help, and this is the only uh, way you can do that, actually. Yeah, it, it's de it definitely shows on the screen. It definitely shows that attention to detail was obsessive, uh, to, to say the least. Um, well, thank you once again for sharing your film with us, and thank you all for uh, attending the screening, and um, hope to see you soon for another screening, definitely at the next festival. Um, so thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Thank you.